This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. And for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the x comes to you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. until midnight, right here, live and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. Now, if you'd like to send an email, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exone Radio TV. You can give us a call, toll-free, from anywhere on the planet, 1-800-610-7035, extension 0, brings you into the studio. And you can listen to the Exone 24-7-365 at www xzoneradiotv.com and of course you can call us in the middle of the desert in the middle of the ocean from anywhere as long as you've got a phone with a connection at 213-401-0080 that's 213-401-0080 it is Monday June the 15th in the year 2015 And it was a busy weekend here. We're getting ready for the Alien Cosmic Expo that starts next weekend, June 26, June 27, June 28. And now, if you can't make it here for one reason or another, you can always go online and watch via pay-per-view live streaming. Now, for all the information pertaining to the live streaming event of the Alien Cosmic Expo, go to digitalbroadcastnetwork.ca that's www.digitalbroadcastnetwork.ca My first guest tonight is Tom Agrano. We're going to be talking to Tom about um, his new book. It's called The Devil in Modern Eden. Now for many, Pope Francis represents a telling sign of the change of the world's religious leaders. He has been characterized for his down-to-earth approach on spiritual ethics He seems consistently uh, to loosen his collar and the collar on the Catholic Church formalities. But he's much more old school than people give him credit for. At least that's when it comes to Satan. Now, according to the Washington Post, and this is a quote, Francis has not only dwelled far more on Satan in sermons and speeches than his recent predecessors have, but also sought to rekindle the devil's image as a supernatural entity with the forces of evil at his beck and call. Wow, most people see the evidence of God with all his wondrous creation everywhere, uh, Tom says. Um, I believe there is also ample evidence of Satan. Through greed, he inspires a lust for wealth, power, fame, or objects of value that extend beyond the dictates of basic survival and comfort. The result is humanity's immeasurable amount of pain and suffering. Joining me now is the author of The Devil in Modern Eden, Tom Grano. His website is thedevilinmoderneden.com. And Tom, welcome to the Exxon. 
Thank you for having me on the show, Rob. I appreciate it. It's a great pleasure, Tom. Tell us, uh, where did your interest in the Bible, the the demonic side of it, come from? <laughs> um, well, from my own personal experiences, and um, of course, having been a student of the Bible, I mm-hmm. fall back then on the old story of Adam and Eve, and um, that goes back into human history. And yep. um, of course, I ex- um, have witnessed the travesty in in human um, development through the ages, and uh, so I uh, combine that with current situation and, of course, my knowledge about future aspiration when it comes to the end of time, um, as, as we understand it. So uh, my experiences primarily um, brought me to um, this, this situation. Um, when I started writing a book, um, it was going to be strictly for Christians. But um, halfway through the material, I realized that this is not just about Christian. This is, this is a, a human problem. This mm-hmm. is a human issue. Um, so the book then is, has been redesigned, reformatted to address Christians and non-Christians. So both parties can be benefited from the material. Tell me, Tom, what kind of evidence or proof do you have that the devil is real? Well, um, well, <laughs> the well, let me let me start by saying this: okay. there is a ferocious enemy in our world that mm-hmm. is wreaking havoc in human culture. But millions of people don't believe that he exists. And I'm, again, I'm speaking about the devil. Yeah. Um, let me suggest mm-hmm. to you that the devil is responsible for all the, directly and indirectly for all the all the problems that we face now in in human culture he is in fact response responsible for the unrest between nations that result in war the corruption in politics and religion and corporations he is the manipulator of injustice around the world he is the instigator of various crimes in our schools, mm-hmm. cities, and workplaces, and he's directly involved in the unhappiness we experience in our homes. So the devil is real. We just have to have the spiritual vision to identify him, see where he is, and how he's affecting us on a daily basis. Is it possible that the devil is a manifestation of man's own ego because we have to blame someone for our fallacies and therefore we need to create the devil in order to give ourselves an escape code? Um, that is one school of thought. Um, that, is mm-hmm. now how, that is not how I understand it. If anyone believes in the Bible, for example, mm-hmm. um, God himself has proclaimed that the devil um, is real. Yeah. Jesus... Um, experience him on a personal level in his own ministry. The disciples experience his involvement in their lives, Mm -hmm. and we experience him today. But you see, the devil is sneaky. He's subtle, he's sneaky, and he's extremely evil. So he doesn't come at you. Sounds like the devil is a politician or a lawyer. Well, he can be that and more. Mm-hmm. He can, he, he, he's, he's the master of disguise. And he doesn't, uh, typically we portray him to be the, the guy with a pitchfork, with horns and dressed in red, and he's mm-hmm. got fire around him. But that is not how the devil approaches us. He approaches us very subtly with things within the culture that we, that we live in. And he comes in very subtly, and he does his dirty work, and he leaves the damage behind and uh, goes ahead and, and attack whoever is vulnerable. Now, you said that if you believe the Bible, and that leads to the opening up a big can of worms. Number one, the Bible wasn't written by God, it was written by man. Man can fail, man has fallacies, therefore does the Bible have fallacies? The Bible has um, discrepancies, yes. If you, if you study the Bible, it, mm-hmm. it has holes in it. Yeah. Uh, there are things that are left out in translation, mm-hmm. but I fundamentally believe that the Bible was inspired by God himself, 
And, of course, God has to communicate to man Mm -hmm. to transfer messages to man. That's why he used disciples and prophets to, to enlighten the community and to transfer his messages to the people he wants to speak to. And the reason for that is, is because no one wants to see God, and, and neither is there a reason to see God. If oh, wait a sec, God, wait, wait a sec, how can you say no one wants to see God? I'd love to see God. <laughs> anyone, who, well, who, anyone who says that they don't want to see God, in my opinion, is not a believer. Well, if you if you put it on a on a on a on a an eternal level, I mean, mm-hmm. I want to see God, but that is not necessarily on on this planet, if you, if if I may say so. Um, I I believe that uh, yes, every, I'll take that back. Everyone wants to see sure. God, but you see, a God doesn't want to be seen. And we know of one character in the Bible, or a few others, that uh, Moses was one of them mm-hmm. who had the privilege to to see God. And uh, but that was a very um, uh, carved situation, very controlled situation, because uh, the Bible has proclaimed that anyone who sees God may not live because of the quality in 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 species, so to speak. Uh, God is much more advanced but in if, his development. If- Okay, but in the book of Genesis, uh, God says, and let us create man in our image, our likeness. So therefore, if we are created in his image, his likeness, then we ourselves are God. (laughs) That's one way to look at it. But that is not quite the way I I see it. Okay. Um, the, 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 the thing is, God has created various species in our world mm-hmm. to survive in their, in their ecosystems. Right. And uh, um, man, of course, is one of them. Man was the last to be created in the development of, of God, um, in, the, in, the, in the development of the universe. Wasn't and, woman the last? Well, yes, if you, but I'm, I'm including woman. I'm in, so you're calling man, it, mankind, you're, 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 okay, humankind, okay. Human, humankind, yes. Okay. Not necessarily uh, Adam, but humankind mm-hmm. was the last to be created in the species of, of the universe. Um, and God, in fact, has created s- three separate kingdoms. One is the world is the kingdom of man. He in, and God retain heaven as his own kingdom. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Satan has hell as his kingdom. Right. And so God specifically uh, carved out man to be man, not man-God, because God is only one being, and man occupies his territory in his dimension, so to speak, and, of course, the devil occupies his territory in his own dimension. So we are people, God is God, the devil is the devil. So we see those three characters at the beginning of the development of of the universe, you know, after creation. And those three characters have actually continued through human development up to today as we speak, and will continue until the end of time. So we are distinctly separated and, and, and uh, different. Thanks, our nation. Tom Grano is our special guest this hour. He's the author of The Devil in Modern Eden. His website is www.thedevilinmoderneden.com. And you're listening to The Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, live and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. All right, Tom, let's get to present day, because I, I, I've got to tell you something. Are you a dad, Tom? I am. I'm a dad, too. I'm a granddad. I love my, I love my children. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I love people, whether I know them or not. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a bit of irony in the Bible, because if God created everyone on... If God created all humankind, then he created the Palestines, he created the Egyptians, he created one and all. And yet, and yet it seems throughout history and biblical times... God kills his own children. You know, you had Sodom and Gomorrah, you had the Great Flood, you ha- and so on and so forth. I would never kill my children, and I have a problem trying to understand the logic behind God killing his own people. Um, 
Yeah, well, that makes sense on a human level, and I would agree with you. I mm-hmm. mean, we all love our children, and we sure. don't want to see harm come to them in any way. But God is a different, uh, different uh, um, uh, species altogether. He is a spirit, and of course, he's got his own qualities. But I often refer to the fact that we are, in fact, change in the pocket coins that is in the pocket of God, and he can dispense, um, spend us however he wishes. But God is not in the business of destroying people on purpose. God, uh, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? He did that on well, purpose. What about, the, expo- what about the great I, flood? I understand that. What about I, the I great understand. flood? What about the great flood when he drowned everyone except Noah and his family? You know? I, I understand that. But let's go back to something that's fundamental to all of this. Many people ask, well, why would God send me to hell? And, um, of course, some people cannot conceive this Mm -hmm. idea of God sending people to hell, similarly to the way you you are questioning things at at the moment. Um, The fact is, God has given us a free will, and that Mm -hmm. comes to that comes becomes central in the business of dealing with Satan and God himself. So look at the situation this way. Okay. We have Satan as a real being. He is not a a figment of the imagination. He is not a symbol of evil. He's a being. We have God as a, a separate being. Right. And then we have those two individuals as spirits. Mm-hmm. They, they they are spirit beings. And then man is in, man has a spiritual aspect to him, and that's the soul. Right. And he's got his physical aspect, which is the body. Right. So when, uh, what is critical here is mm-hmm. the choice, the free will that God has given to man. So God, in fact, has a plumb line. Let's say he has a margin by which all of us need to measure. All right. So uh, he comes in and he lays his rules down or laws or whatever. You can look at it Mm -hmm. however you want. But the fact is that he's got his guidelines and his conditions. If you and so he never, in fact, never imposes or superimpose his authority or his authority over over the will of man. So. We have man in the middle between God and Mm -hmm. Satan, and man is responsible for choosing the temptations that Satan throws at us and the communication that God has with us on a regular basis. By the way, all your listeners can need to understand that Satan communicates with them and me and you on a daily basis. God himself communicates with us on a daily basis, even today. We don't quite understand the communication because we're not always in, in, the, in, the, in the sphere of spiritual communication. But you so, see, the soul of man is the medium by, we, by which the devil communicates to us and God communicates to us. So we are, in fact, in the middle mm-hmm. between those two tremendous forces. And they communicate on a reg- to us on a regular basis. The choices that we make on a daily basis determine the one that has the greater influence on our lives. So this is where the free will comes in. So if we make certain decisions mm-hmm. that take us in the wrong direction, right. we will face the consequences of that. It's not, in other words, if we don't meet the plumb line that God has set for the condition for entering heaven, for yeah, example, we're, we're going to get annihilated. We're going to burn in hell for the rest of eternity. Right? It's his, yeah, okay. it's, it's his way or the highway. Yeah, essentially that way, yes. Okay, so if, he, if, if we have free will, yes. all right, that gives us the opportunity to either go to the left or to the right. That's correct. So that's because God, that's because God created us and he's put down this, these rules, like, I have with my children, you have with your children, and, you know, you've got to be home at a certain time, you've got a curfew, you've got to brush your teeth before you get, you've got to make sure all your homework's done, and so on and so forth. Did God create, yes, the, de- did, did God create the devil? Yes, he did. 
So why doesn't he just why doesn't he just destroy the devil like he did all the people during the great flood? Well, it's I, I in fact have, I pose the question in the book as a, a provocative um, issue because My. he could have done that. Yeah, he sure, could he have could definitely have. done that. But you see, long before you need to uh, well, long before Earth was created, God had God created His heaven. Mm-hmm. And he created his entourage up there. And Satan was an angel. Yeah. Um, if I, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but he, sure. he was an angel, and mm-hmm. he was the most handsome creature in heaven. And right. he was the most trusted being up there. And, of course, he violated his, his code of conduct, and uh, um, he, in fact, run into conflict with God and to the point where they had war. And then God has to, had to banish him from heaven and uh, assign him his own kingdom, which is hell. So um, at that point, we could say that why didn't God destroy Satan altogether and be done with it? Exactly. But, um, <laughs> but then man came along, and man, um, God left the situation open. You see, Satan is not entirely condemned. Satan has another condemnation um, coming. Um, let's say God has assigned him. He, he banished him from heaven, so he now dwells in his, in his hellish condition. Mm-hmm. But you see, Satan has another uh, condemnation that's coming. And What's that? Satan no, is, a, is aware of that. But you see, um, the, the, the issue is that God left the situation open to test man's love for him. In other words, if you say you love me, prove to me that you love me. And because we don't it, play because, those games with our children. Sure, you know, but we don't kill our children if they don't love us. <laughs> um, uh, no, we don't. And But some people do. It's been happening. You know, lately. yeah, it's been happening, but not to the extent of global annihilation that is apparently what happened during the Great Flood. So yeah. how, how, can you write a, how can you write rules? That you yourself break. Thou shalt not kill, but I'm going to do it because they don't love me. Boom. Well, um, the only other way I can explain that is mm-hmm. God is is absolutely righteous. God is sinless, and He's holy. But wait a sec. Wait a sec. Whoa, 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 whoa. How can you be How can you be sinless if you kill? <laughs> That's a good question. It's. Um, well, God does not sin because he has no one, he has no laws above his own. Okay, so he, once again, it's my way or the highway, and if you don't love me, boom, you're gone. Well, that, that in other words, we, we're choosing, we choose, uh, Rob, we need to understand that, first of all, man disobedient in the Garden of Eden left God in a dire strait. Well, I don't know. Well, you, I, I don't know. God had the opportunity of getting rid of the serpent. He didn't. He let it happen. So he's got to bear, some, bear responsibility as well. Well, he has in some ways, because if you follow the, the trail that he took to rescue man after the incident in, in mm-hmm. Eden, we see a major, major sacrifice all the way to the point where he had to make his the own the, uh, sacrifice himself on the cross to save man. So he has brought salvation to mankind as a result of the situation that took place in the Garden of Eden. So are you are you saying that Jesus Christ was God? Yes, he is. Yes. Then why on the cross did Jesus look up and say, "Father, why have you forsaken me?" If he was God. That makes no sense, and that's in the Bible. It is. It is in the Bible, and it is definitely so. And but you see, what we see is that Jesus Christ wasn't mm-hmm. entirely God. Jesus Christ was a man. We could say he was half human, half God. Um, if 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 we can put it that way, mm-hmm. um, God Himself inseminated um, uh, Mary, or um, you know, impregnated Mary to. Um, to have a baby, so well. There, there's there's another there's another there's another uh, commandment that was broken. And thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
Okay, uh, so that's yes. two for God that we've struck down, okay, but he can get away with it because he's righteous. He's righteous. He's mm-hmm. absolutely right. And he can bend the rules. Why? And he can, and we, we see that in, in a human situation, mm-hmm. we want things to be linear. We want things to be f- from A to B and straight and, and absolutely perfect. And, we, and, and, and part of God wants that, too. But there is a situation or a time when he, in fact, wants to bend the rules. And we see that happen in several, ta- several oh, yeah, situations we can, in the Bible. Oh, we can see it today in the Catholic Church with all the, with all the sex abuse scandal going on. Yeah, he bends the rules. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think that's God's responsibility. I think that's a man's responsibility. But, you but see, what once we, again, what we do, once what again, we do in, pardon? I said once again, it seems that the rules get bent if you're on his team, his inner sanctum. Well, you see, part of the thing that I wrote about, part of the book dealt heavily in the church in this situation, mm-hmm. because we see that the devil isn't affecting not only people on the outside, but people in the church. Mm-hmm. And some of the most holy people in the church are being affected. Most, some of the most popular people that, that preach the gospel are being affected by, by the devil. So the devil is very much involved in the church, in the congregation, on the pulpit, as he is anywhere else. In fact, he's even more so. So when people commit sin in the church, that is not necessarily God's doing, it's man's doing. They're being influenced by the enemy, and of course the enemy is taking full advantage of the fact that, oh my God, there's, you know, the church mm-hmm. is sinning. And uh, so he's making a laughing stock out of the whole thing, basically. Yeah, you know, um, isn't uh, another one of the Ten Commandments, uh, you shall not make idols, and when you go into Catholic churches, all you've got are these saints, and you've got all these people who pray to these idols. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I agree. It, you see, when you look at the Bible and you step out of the box— it, it leaves a lot of questions to a person who dares to believe. You see, um, it says you shouldn't uh, commit adultery, you shouldn't steal, you should not bear false witness against your neighbor, you should not covet. And if God is so righteous, how can he break his own commandments? Well, we see, again, Rob, it is not God who does these things. It's they, not? The rules are there, the, the commandments are there, man chooses to break them. Whoa. And those people can be in church or anywhere else. By the way, this is, mm-hmm. this, uh, this is the very way that I, I believe that I've, in fact, stip- um, uh, described in the book how the devil manipulates us and confuse, confuses religion altogether. Well, how do we know that God isn't the devil? Well, he cannot be, because, <laughs> like Jesus, that, in fact, uh, th- that question was posed to Jesus at one time, mm-hmm. and uh, while he was alive, and yes. he, in fact, said, well, how can the devil cast out devils? Because if that happened, he would be destroying his own kingdom. So the devil cannot fight against the devil. So there has to be, <laughs> and there is, a higher authority over the devil, and that is God. All right, so we've got God, who is the creator of all humankind. We have God, who destroyed the earth in a global annihilation except for Noah and his family. We have God, who is our creator, who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You've got God, the creator, who constantly sees, if he still is out there and if he does watch us and communicate with us every day, the global atrocities that are going on today, the children who are hungry, the children who are dying because of disease and water shortages, the state of the, the, the earth itself, the wars, so, please, help me try and understand why people should believe in a God who doesn't do anything except let things go on, because of free will. I think that's an scapegoat that God created for himself. 
Well, it, if if you look at God as the 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 being that bestows benevolence on humankind, mm-hmm. but then it turns right around and curse us and hurt us, then I, I think there is there is somewhat of a contradiction, confusion there, a contradiction. Mm-hmm. Um, so. But it's, it would seem to me, uh, Rob, that you're putting all the blame on God, and uh, well, the topic is mostly about the devil who gets in our lives and but create these habits. That's exactly why I'm asking these questions. That is yeah. exactly why I'm asking these questions, because maybe we're putting too much blame on the devil. Uh, maybe, maybe we're using the devil as an escape goat. It wasn't the devil. Once again, that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't the devil who drowned the Egyptians as they were following Moses. It wasn't the devil that that caused a global flood that annihilated every living thing on this planet, according to the book, except Noah and the occupants of the ark. That wasn't the devil. Show me, show me anywhere, show me anywhere in the Bible or anywhere else where the devil has done more damage, more pain, more hurt, more death than God has. Well, it, 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 it doesn't come out that way if you look at it that way, because what we see is that the devil is in the background, mm-hmm. and he creates, it, creates situations to cause a vexation on, on, the, on, on God's point of view. In other words, if you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, mm-hmm. And, 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 and you, you blame God entirely for the travesty that took place there. You are po- probably overlooking the idea that God sent warning to this community, long and plenty. But warning. you yourself said, sir, that people have free will. And if they have free will, God would not destroy them. Therefore, that, the, the aspect and the idea of free will is a lie. It's a, false, it, it, it's a falsehood. It doesn't exist. Well, today we have, we have free will to go whichever direction we, we want to go. We are choosing what we want to do. What we don't want to accept is the consequences of our own actions, you see. So the free will is very mm-hmm. much alive today, and we can choose to do anything under heaven. <laughs> so, so God go isn't going. So God isn't going to punish us if we go against Him. He, we, if we go outside hit those rules and regulations. Of course, He is. Uh, but why? If, We've got if, free will. But you see, that's exactly it. We have. We have the free will to do to follow the influence of of of, of, of Satan or mm-hmm. God, and if we follow and, Satan, and if we choose if we choose to follow the influence of Satan, then God is saying, "Well, you become part of that group, so you go with that group." And if you choose to follow the the influence of God, you then choose God, and you you stay with Him. So it's merely a dividing situation at the end um so uh, it comes down to who we follow really and god is saying well this is what you've chosen so you go this way and the others who make opposite choices then they go the other way and it's my way or the highway if you don't follow me you're going to burn in hell and if you don't follow me you might be destroyed in a cataclysmic event that'll annihilate the global population on Earth, or I just might smuck a city or two just to prove my point. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. Hey, speaking about Starcom, listen to my good buddy Ed Till, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., right here on Starcom. I'll be back on the other side of this break with Tom Grano. Don't go away. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? 
Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the Exxon, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, Exxon Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk. For a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. The Alien Cosmic Expo will be held in Brantford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28, and will feature 24 internationally acclaimed experts and researchers of UFOs, crop circles, alien abductions, and much more in this three-day 2015 summer Canadian event. Experts in the field of extraterrestrials and alien encounters, out-of-body experiences, past life regression, soul reading, psychic and mediumship will all be presented with professionalism, integrity and credibility, making the Alien Cosmic Expo the largest event of its kind in Canada for 2015. The Exhibitor Hall will feature a spectacular lineup of gifted mediums, psychics, astrologers, channelers, aura photography, healers, as well as books, DVDs, alternative health products, crystals, jewelry, and much more completing the venue with something for everyone. For all information and to purchase your tickets for the Alien Cosmic Expo, go to www.aliencosmicexpo.com. That's www.aliencosmicexpo.com. Hello, heaven.
Gavin here, God speaking. Look, if you leave your name, number and prayer after the tone, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. <coughs> Please note that I try to answer all prayers in strict rotation, but sometimes the answer is no. one 800 7035 extension 0 is worldwide toll free. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, Xzone Radio TV, and you can listen to the Xzone 724-365 at www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour, Exonation, is Tom Grano. His website is www.thedevilinmoderneden.com. And after caring for his chronically ill mother and siblings in Dominica, Tom immigrated to the United States at the age 17 and taught himself how to read and write. He served with the United States Navy for 14 years and went to college to become a financial management specialist. As an author and spiritual coach, he inspires others to spiritually vibrancy. Presently, he is focused on an education theme for individuals and families, which he calls the uncommon language of life. And he lives in California. Once again, he is the author of The Devil in Modern Eden, and his website is www.thedevilinmoderneden.com. Tom, why do you think the media underplays Pope Francis uh, with reference to his views regarding Satan's palpable influence? Well, that's a good question, Rob. <clears throat> let's, um, well, let's first of all understand some pre- a, a premise here. Okay. The media is like everybody else. So people in general have an aversion to the devil, partly because of what he represents. Uh, for example, we have... Four in ten people, Americans, that is, mm-hmm. Christian Americans, who believe in some, co- some concept in, of, of Satan. But they don't, as I indicated earlier, they don't believe he's a real being. He's a symbol of evil. So, right. in some ways, in people's concept, we assume to know everything there is to know about the devil. So, we avoid the topic altogether. It conjures up things that we don't like to hear, um, afterlife, hell, torment, and things like that, and a lot of that is mm-hmm. unpleasant. Sure. At, this, at the same time, Rob, people then, we seem to be entertained or getting great pleasure out of watching evil in various forms. And we are drawn by it partly because of the dark side of human nature which is a very interesting concept. One thing that, uh, one situation that uh, reminds me of this is a song that says, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. And so in many ways, we're choosing to do unpleasant things, um, uh, evil things. And because, uh, so we have this perception of the devil, and uh, we don't, we don't want to, um, hear about him. At the, the interest, the other, on, on the flip side of this, mm-hmm. we have uh, the majority, the majority of Americans believe in hell. Isn't that interesting? But few believe in the devil. You cannot believe in one and not the other. Well, that's, you know, uh, because a majority of Americans believe in UFOs, a majority of uh, Americans believe in angels, and a majority of Americans believe in ghosts, and the list goes on and on. So, uh, what can we actually make out of a poll except what we want the figures to reflect? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that is true. Um, but, I, I, I mean, there's some validity to some statistics, you know, that mm-hmm. I would think. Um, but uh, the fact is most people, um, the topic of, of, of the devil is a hidden thing, and that's primarily because of the deception that the devil has perpetrated over the years. Um, so the media is no different than the rest of the public, really. Well, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand your comment where you said the devil is a perception. If people go to church, and if people 
do what's right and what's wrong, shouldn't they understand the possibility of the devil? Or are they like me, where the devil was created by humankind in order to have a built-in escape goat? Because do you remember that TV show years ago with Flip Wilson when he'd say, the devil made me do it? Yes. Okay. So how do we as humans then in our minds justify there is good on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, and we have evil on the other, and here I am in the middle. The goodness tells me to follow the Ten Commandments that he himself breaks, but the devil has no rules, so I don't have to worry about breaking anything. Now, the good guy tells me I have free will, but on the other hand, if I follow the devil, or if I go a different direction, uh, I'm going to end up on his blacklist, and I'm going to find myself either drowned or, or disseminated by a meteorite or an asteroid or some other form of death. <laughs> so how do, we, how do we justify this? Because I'm, I have, I've had a hell of a time trying to understand this ever since I was a kid. Right. Well, there is there is um, quite a bit. I mean, part of the there's quite a bit to understand. And the the, the book that I wrote took about three hundred. It's a little over three hundred pages, and very interesting stuff. Um, because the the devil is is a disguiser, and he deceives us in ways that are appealing to us. Um, the flesh, so to speak, the temptations, the things that we want, the money, the fame, the, the, the status. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, let's, let's talk about things we want and money, okay? We right. want to live, you know, like we want, to, we want to have good things in life. Is that right or is that wrong? That is right. Okay. So we were talking about money. Is money the root of all evil? Um, yes, you, you find that behind just about every bad situation that yeah. happens in society, is the root of it is money. Uh, okay. Follow the money, they say. Okay, then why is the Vatican and the Catholic Church the richest corporations in the world? And why do people, why does the Church solicit money from their, from their congregation each and every week if money is the root of all evil? If they ask for money, therefore... According to what you were saying, there's evil behind their request for money. I I I, I ascribe to part of this thinking, uh, frankly, uh, Rob. Mm-hmm. I um, I believe that the church, the churches themselves, have been deceived in more ways than one, <laughs> and the money is the part, um, the root of the evil there. Yeah. Um, so I no, if I were to put a church together, it would not be involved with money as we understand it to be today. Then why doesn't the Catholic Church and the Pope sell all its assets, get rid of all the assets, take care of the hungry, take care of the poor, take care of the sick, as Jesus would have done if he was walking on the, sea of, uh, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee? Well, you and I both understand this is not going to happen. Because but why not? It it is, it is the very thing that gives them status and power and, and, and position. Gee, well, so wait a sec, wait a sec. Why would they get rid of that? Well, their leader, their, the person that their, their church is fashioned out of, didn't have it, so why do they need it? If the religion is that strong, it would survive without money. If the religion is weak and if the religion is false and it is built on lies and deception then yes, it will fail. And maybe that's what we're seeing now in society. People are losing faith in the church because we're able to see we're not sheep anymore. We're not sheep. We don't, we don't, we don't need a shepherd. We need a leader. I, I, I agree with you. And we have polluted what Jesus started, basically. Yeah. And you, 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 you're looking at the Catholic Church, which is, which is part of the whole thing, but mm-hmm. don't leave out the other denominations that are doing pretty much the same well, thing. Well, when, when it not comes in the same fashion. But. Exactly. Like, these guys like to have the high hats, the gold all over the place. You don't, you don't, they need to come back down to earth because they yes. are men and women just like we are. Yeah. They are so no different ways, and need, no better. 
We need a revamping of the concept of religion. Either and that or get you. rid of it totally. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Because, you see, Rob, inwardly we have a yearning for God. I don't. And that's not good. That's not going to go away because it's the soul that's yearning for its creator. Well, listen, my creator, have fellowship with my creator, if it is God, is a mean son of a gun. I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want my leader to kill his children. I don't want my leader to ignore his sick, his weak. I don't want my leader to allow wars to go on. I don't want my leader... To, to allow people to sleep on the sidewalks and on subway grates because they don't have a home. I don't want my leader to let people go to bed hungry every night. I don't want my leader to let the world go to hell in a handbasket. So you're right, I don't want him as a leader. But we see, in, in, in connection with that, Rob, we see human have perpetrated similar or maybe worse crimes on other human beings when we go back in history. Sure, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. But don't forget, God made us in his image and his likeness. So. And Rob, I take you back to the situation where the devil came in and polluted Mm -hmm. us. He could have gotten rid of the the devil. We are not the perfect being that God created. But he could have have solved, he could have gotten rid of the devil. He could have corrected the situation instead of killing all those people that he has all he had to do was annihilate one entity one one thing the devil and he didn't right he didn't is it because he enjoys watching people suffer he enjoys people begging him for forgiveness begging for that one more chance is that what he likes well we we have a situation where god created a universe specifically for man um, so, God had to retain man, keep him, and uh, while banishing the devil, give, giving the devil some privilege, uh-huh. and so to speak, to live and continue and give man, this is where the free will, we go mm-hmm. back to what we started on, this is right. where the free will comes to play, where we, in fact, have the choice between the two. And, on, you know, I cannot answer these these godly things, mm-hmm. uh, Rob, because they, they 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 are designed for God to understand. What I can say is that God has a standard about Himself, and uh, I mentioned the fact that He's holy and righteous. Yeah. And of course, we need to meet His standard. And as you said, it's either His way or the highway, and surely that's the way it is. Um, and look where the world is today, because. Of that attitude. But you see, I put this is where I put the blame on the devil. You see, it is it's easy to blame somebody cool. else. It's easy to blame somebody else instead of taking responsibility for the actions. And it seems that this is what religion has done with the Almighty because he can't do anything wrong because he is God. He can't, he can bend the rules. The yeah. devil can't. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not set out fair. God could have created the perfect world here. He had the opportunity. He could have gotten rid of the devil. But you know what? Throughout history, the devil is used as a control factor. And religion is a control. It controls its people. It controls the flock. That's why people are referred to as sheep. And he is the shepherd because we follow unconditionally. That's not fair. That's not right. I, in, in some levels, on some levels, I agree with you. But now, let's look at the situation where we are today, where we are. All right, we've got less than and, two and, minutes. And, and this is where, in fact, we have to um, understand what's happening. And there is salvation for man. You see, there is opportunity for, for mm-hmm. man to be saved. And that's why Jesus came and, and made the sacrifice. So God himself made the sacrifice and, and um, provide a solution for um, evil and for sin. And man has an opportunity to escape from the grips of the enemy. And so he has not li- left us um, totally isolated, basically, but has given, created an opportunity for us to be saved. And so he has provided that. Tom, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. It's been an interesting hour. Uh, we'll be back on the other side of this break, Exxon Nation. Now, if you'd like to get more information on Tom, the name of his book is The Devil in Modern Eden. 
And his website is www.thedevilinmoderneden.com. Wow, what an hour. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Wow, I, I, I think I rattled him, and I don't know why. I was just asking very simple questions. But i got to tell you something, Exxon Nation. Hmm. The devil made me do it. We'll be back, Uncle Way. Manifestation is driven by imagination, intent, and passion. In our culture, all three have been distorted and disabled by modern media and exploitation. Re-engage your imagination and your passion by entering into the world of paranormal romance. Kahir O'Donnell takes her readers on an exciting journey into the endless possibilities of loving, passionate, and mutually respectful male-female relationship. Her latest book, The Long Dark Night, features special ops adventure, a daring rescue, a psychic woman from the stars, and a special agent that will die to protect her. The Long Dark Night by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or amazon.com. energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. 